Hey, what's up guys? In today's video, we're going to be taking a look at a substation again in a rural area. We haven't seen this particular substation in any of my videos yet. There's a few things that are extremely unique to this setup that I want to show you guys. Some stuff that's pretty cool. There's a few designs that are of our own design for the setup the substation that I was involved in. We're going to take a look at that as well as there's another substation right across the road. We're going to take a quick peek at that as well. We're going to do this whole video in one take. I was on the road for two weeks. For you, the, for those of you that follow my Instagram, you may have noticed that I was traveling through the U.S. I just got back from Texas three days ago. So anyhow, bear with me. As I said, zero editing, one take. I'm going to pause the video just to walk across the street. We're going to start there. Let's go check things out. All right, guys. So this is our substation right behind me. It is 69,000 volts and it's transformed down to 12.47 kV. But the first thing we're gonna look at, let's flip the camera around here. We got this guy over here. It's a fairly large substation. It is privately owned. We, we don't look after this guy at all. However, usually when I do a sub inspection on our substation, I do take a quick peek at things, more or less just for public safety. I just usually glance over at the fence, make sure there was no break-ins, make sure nothing's ready to catch fire or anything. Don't spend much time on it, but just a quick peek. This substation here, I'm not sure the exact voltage. Again, it's not our jurisdiction, but I believe those, those overhead lines are in the 35 kV range. And that power is being generated from a whole lot of great big windmills down over that knoll and up the big hill on the other side. And then that is stepped up to 69,000 volts and ties directly into our transmission line right there. This is the very end of our transmission line. As you can see, we follow these structures and this transmission line feeds this tiny little rural substation over here. So let's take a walk over and have a closer look at that. I mentioned in a few videos, I think probably two or three years ago, I had a video of three things you must absolutely do before you enter any substation. And uh, depends according to your company's procedures, of course. But most importantly, you have to advise your dispatcher that you're here, that you're inside the substation, so they're not gonna start remotely operating switches. Also, so they know where you are in case there's an incident of some sort. Also, you have to do a perimeter check of the substation. Let's zoom this camera out here. So I always do a quick perimeter check. The majority of it, I can see, hard to tell through the fence, but I can look through to the back side. Come on, camera, there we go. We can see there are no holes on the back side. We're just gonna round the corner here, check things out a little bit. Everything looks good. If there was a break-in or if the substation was compromised in any way, I do have to phone for backup and have a second person on site, which would be a substation technician before entering. And the third thing we have to do is Verify quickly a quick visual of the integrity of the equipment things like our bond straps make sure the gates are all bonded together There's no Visual damage to anything. Sometimes you might see a jumper burned off. Maybe some insulators blown up You just want to do a very quick basic check before You get in close to all of this equipment So everything looks good. Let's uh, Let's take a closer look at things so as I mentioned, 69,000 volts is coming in from overhead. I'm gonna to try to stop spinning this camera around so much. I'm probably making some of you guys a little bit dizzy here. 69,000 volt coming in overhead. And you will notice, first of all, that it carries on for two more short little span. The reason that 69,000 volts carries on for a couple more span, and we see these two great big standoff insulators 
on this pole is where this substation is at the end of the line. There's no tie. If this power transformer goes out, there's no way to alternately feed power to this area. So what we will do, we will bring in the mobile substation. I do have a video on that. Definitely check it out. I think I called it mobile substation 138 kV or something like that. It's a transport truck with all the equipment in the substation. Rolls in on wheels. It unfolds just like a transformer from the cartoons. We run some high voltage leads right up those standoffs onto the 69 kV. We feed that down into the mobile substation and then we tie it to the grid versus or via this pole right here behind me. You can see there's already some, can't zoom in, so let's flip this camera around. Some standoffs ready to go where the cables will attach, hook into those switches and feed into our lines. So we can completely bypass our entire substation and isolate it via these switches and these cross arms and transfer all the power to the mobile in the event of emergency or maintenance, of course. So back up to our main incoming feed, 69,000 volts. First thing we have right here is a disconnect switch. So I wanna add that as I'm going over all this equipment, I'm also doing a visual inspection to make sure that there's no indications of any failure. There's two switches on this structure. The disconnect switch at the top center of the screen, and there's also a switch right here, which are high tension fuses. So the purpose of this disconnect switch, if I wanted to shut power off to that power transformer, I can do that via this gang switch handle here. There's a whole procedure around operating that, which I've covered in a few videos already, but those aren't fused. That's a solid blade disconnect switch. That switch cannot be operated under load of any kind. So if we're gonna open that switch to isolate this power transformer, we get to shed the load. We are gonna shed the load by opening it on the distribution side, which we'll take a look at that in a minute. Basically, you're gonna open the oil reclosers. So the second set of switches right here, the high tension fuses, if there's a fault anywhere inside the substation, generally speaking, the power transformer, let's say a black bear crawls up onto that power transformer and shorts out those 69 kV leads, these guys are gonna blow it's very loud and violent it's quite an explosion ultimately that's going to protect the equipment and we can replace those high tension fuses if required these next guys that you see right here those are lightning arresters in the event that lightning hits the transmission line that is a direct path to ground through an extremely uh, high uh, high ohm whatever this is why i sometimes edit videos, can't think of the word, but it's a high resistance path to ground. So that voltage is gonna bleed out through that arrestor and protect any of the equipment from receiving an over voltage. We then feed our bus work through those AMPAC connectors right there. If you guys were asking about different types of connectors, these are AMPACs. They're one of the most reliable connectors on the market. Definitely gonna have a video all about AMPACs on their own very soon. So our bus work here, we're just taking a look at the tempered glass insulators. None of them are busted. These tempered glass insulators, they don't crack like the porcelain. When they fail, they completely shatter into a million pieces. So we've got our 69 kV coming down into our power transformer. Everything looks good up there. There's no chips or dings on any of the porcelain there. That's going to feed down into this power transformer, which is humming quite nicely at the moment. That's our silica gel right there that removes any moisture content from the oil. The wires are going to come out of our low voltage side at 7200 volt phase to ground and 12.47 kV phase to phase, which would be the system voltage rating, and out onto our distribution circuit. So this, this structure is pretty interesting right here. This is something I wanted to cover that's very unique to this substation and probably going to be very unique to a lot of the viewers, even that are linemen, that probably haven't seen this setup. So what we've got here are trip savers. Yes, a lot of us have seen trip savers. A lot of us probably don't like them. They're heavy, they're awkward, they're difficult to use. 
they can be great in the right applications. So what we've got here, when we go out onto the distribution line, this goes maybe four span out to the highway. It takes off to the left and the right, and there's an oil recloser on, on each side, heading off to the left and one heading off to the right. But we do still need protection on this short piece of line. Also, there is a single phase tap going maybe 20 span, feeding a few houses behind us. Trying to not make you guys dizzy. So if there is a fault on those short pieces of line, these trip savers, they're in uh, a standard cutout setup, but rather than a fused cutout door, there is a trip saver that fits the cutout, hangs inside, and in the event of a fault, it opens internally and automatically recloses, much in the same way as a breaker or a recloser. And if it's a high current fault, or if the fault does not clear, that entire unit will drop open. Those units are quite heavy. I don't know what they weigh. I'm gonna say maybe 40 pounds. Maybe I'm way off, but you put them on a stick and, and, and they're very difficult to operate. So one of the issues we've had in the past, when you're closing them, as that top, that little bar, that prong, that locks right in there, if you close that not hard enough or too hard, that can drop back open on you and draw an arc. So what we've actually done, they're also difficult to use a load buster on. So we put them in series with a set of load brake cutouts. Right now, if I wanted to isolate that power transformer and I had to operate these devices, I would actually operate these load brake cutouts. Very simple to use. Just need an AB hot stick. Yank down on that ring. They do have the load brake arc chute. So I would be able to shut off power from there. These units would then be isolated and I can reset them, reclose them, remove them, do whatever I gotta do while they're de-energized. It's just a much safer setup for, for operating those. So it is labeled as a recloser device, 6515 R001. And in the event of the unit failing completely, we do have some 200 amp cutout doors all ready to go here. Next thing we're gonna look at, this is our station service, just a little 10 kVA transformer. Anything electronic in the substation is powered off that transformer, which just taps off the distribution bus work right up here off that top clamp and you can see our cabinet labeled right here so let's take a look on a little further here what we have down here are voltage regulators so you can see our bus work is separated by that one tiny little insulator the source side coming in from the left it's going to go down through this switch into our voltage regulator which we have covered in many videos now as demand increases or decreases in the line these units will ensure that voltage remains fairly consistent so in the morning when there's a ton of load it's going to draw that voltage down this guy's going to boost that voltage back up and drop it back down accordingly as needed throughout the day these switches aren't fused gonna go back up onto the line and then through our metering tank again covered in a few videos metering tank there's a couple PTs potential transformers which bring that voltage down to 120 volts and CTs which will bring that current down to a readable level so we can monitor usage out of this substation that all comes down into this unit right here where we see our metering tank. From there, we're out onto our line and that's pretty much it. So everything looks good here. I don't see anything abnormal. Something I look for on these voltage regulators. If it fails, sometimes you'll see some numbers way off here. You can see the taps on those dials right up here. If that yellow hand was all the way to minus 16 or plus 16, I'd investigate a little further to make sure that the auto tap feature wasn't failing. One last thing I do want to mention, some of you may have noticed this new hard hat, which is super cool. I was pumped when I got this guy. 
but let's walk over here outside of the substation. I cannot remove my heart at in the substation, but I do want to say a huge thanks to Milwaukee Tools. We got the Canada flag on one side. We've got the US flag on the other. This is a class two side impact rated safety helmet with the Bob's Decline logo on the front. Very cool, love this hard hat. Uh, big shout out to Milwaukee for sending this in the mail last week. Hope to see you all soon. Thanks for stopping in, be safe.